If you want to talk about dreaming the impossible dream, how about a mashup of an airplane and a helicopter? Imagine designing a single aircraft with the vertical takeoff and hovering abilities of a helicopter that can also climb high, fly fast, and go far, just like a fixed wing airplane. And it can carry a buttload of people and gear. As it turns out, engineering something like this is damn hard. And if you have a Howard Hughes level of insanity and are crazy enough to set out in actually building such a complex machine, well, actually someone did build it. Look no further than the Bell Boeing V-22, more commonly known as the Osprey. This beautiful, ugly marvel of aviation stands alone in its design and is unmistakable in both sight and sound. But in its 30-year history, it has been associated with over 40 deaths and more than 50 injuries, many attributed to design flaws and mechanical failures. And yet, the Marines who fly the Osprey are some of its most passionate proponents. They love this bird and want to keep flying it. But why? What makes them so willing to risk their lives to an aircraft that has such a dubious past? We need to go back to why the Osprey was dreamed up in the first place and the problems it tried to solve. In 1980, U.S. President Jimmy Carter ordered Operation Eagle Claw, an attempt to rescue 52 embassy staff held hostage in Iran. In a very intricate plan involving over 100 special ground forces, several helicopters and airplanes, and a slew of other supporting military might, things did not go well. Pre-rescue, only five of the eight helicopters even made it to the staging area, the others succumbing to mechanical breakdowns and a dust storm. Carter wisely ordered the mission aborted. But during retreat, things only got worse. In an effort to get much needed fuel to both a Sea Stallion helicopter and an EC-130 plane that were running low, dust and fate set off tragic events that are still chilling today. Equipment failure in the rescue helicopters made it necessary to end the mission. As our team was withdrawing after my order to do so, two of our American aircraft collided on the ground following a refueling operation in a remote desert location in Iran. But to my deep regret, eight of the crewmen of the two aircraft which collided were killed and several other Americans were hurt in the accident. You see, the sheer number of aircraft required to transport so many people both in and out, the frequent refueling needs, and mechanical fragility made it clear that using so many aircraft of the day was just not working, and lives were being lost. This tragedy made it undeniable that a speedier, multi-role aircraft with vertical takeoff and landing capabilities increased range and fuel efficiency, and more robustness in extreme conditions were something the U.S. military desperately needed to ensure success and to save lives. In 1983, the experimental JVX program was given lead to the Marines and Navy, also taking in requirements from the Air Force and the Army, although the Army was later to drop out. Bell and Boeing were ultimately given the shared contract and throughout the 80s and 90s, several prototypes, test flights, and design changes were made. And despite complicated budgetary battles between the White House and Congress, and even seven deaths in 1992, by 1999 some considered it a success and its future bright. But in 2000, tragic events would call into question the entire Osprey program putting the future of this insane engineering feat into severe jeopardy. We'll come back to that in a moment. But first, let's take a look at some of the Osprey's impressive features and capabilities. Now these V-22 specifications will be different depending on the variant. The Osprey is powered by two Rolls-Royce engines providing over 6,000 horsepower each. Its tilt rotor design uses nacelles, which are mechanisms that can be rotated to act like either helicopter blades or traditional turboprops. The massive blades are 38 feet in diameter and can even be folded for storage. It has a capacity of up to 32 troops or 20,000 pounds of internal cargo. 
There are flares and carbon fiber construction for better survivability. And it sports a single 50 caliber or 7.62 millimeter machine gun. It also has something called EEPS, or Engine Air Particle Separator, basically a dust filter for extreme conditions. It has a max speed of 360 miles per hour, with an impressive range of 1,000 miles, and a climb rate of up to 2,400 feet per minute, and a service ceiling of 25,000 feet, and it can also be refueled in air with something like a C-130. The Osprey has three flight modes, helicopter or VTOL mode where the nacelles are vertical, and props horizontal, airplane or fixed wing mode where the nacelles are horizontal and props are vertical, and conversion mode where the nacelles are somewhere in between for rolling, takeoff, and landing. The V-22 has a variety of uses, rescue missions, medevac and case vac operations, transport of troops and equipment even on carriers at sea, transport of light strike vehicles like the Growler, humanitarian efforts, and more. All right, so the Osprey has a pretty impressive sales brochure, but what about its history and safety record? Remember the tragic events of 2000 we mentioned earlier? Well, in April of 2000, in a simulated rescue attempt in Arizona, during landing, the Osprey descended too fast when its right rotor suddenly stalled, resulting in a crash and explosion that killed all 19 on board. The cause was determined to be VRS, or vortex ring state, a dangerous condition where the aircraft descends rapidly into its own downwash. And just eight months later, in December of 2000, in North Carolina, a flight control error caused a V-22 to crash, killing all four aboard. The cause was determined to be twofold. First, a wiring harness chafed against a hydraulic line, causing a leak and subsequent alert. But a software bug caused the Osprey to decelerate each one of the eight times the pilot attempted to reset the alert. In 2001, a Pentagon-appointed investigation into the Osprey essentially found the aircraft to be fundamentally sound, yet some design changes were subsequently made to make the V-22 easier to fly and maintain. So is the Osprey a military technological wonder or a $70 million death trap? It depends on who you ask, but what do the Marines have to say about the aircraft they risk their lives to fly? They are not ignorant to the deaths, injuries, and design issues, nor are they blind to its capabilities. And what they have to say certainly gives pause for thought. None of us have any desire to be flying an aircraft that we think is gonna kill us. Is that back door open? I see it. A group of young Marine Recon units jump out. And that was probably the best feeling I've ever felt in my entire life. I do not fear for my life anytime I fly, so. <laughs> From the standpoint of, of uh, taking it to the bad guy, you got a lot more options. It's very quiet. You can't hear it come over, even low altitude. Tell rotor aircraft gives us tremendous capabilities that an airplane has as far as speed and range. Uniquely, we can land in a hover just like a helicopter could. So we can land in a lot of places that an airplane can't land. So the Osprey can do some things that no other single aircraft can do, and it seems to be finally proving itself with successful humanitarian, capture, and rescue missions completed over the last few years. Even HMX-1, the helicopter squadron that flies Marine-1, has 12 MV-22 Ospreys that move press pool, White House staff, Secret Service, and dignitaries during the President's travels. The Marines and Air Force have dozens of Ospreys in service, with the Navy slated to have another 40-plus delivered by 2020. But remember that most military aircraft are products of their time, and defense budgets of the time which often change by the time they are put into service many years later. So with an average $70 million flyaway cost, is the Bell Boeing V-22 Osprey worth keeping around? Does its future potential outweigh its sins of the past? Oh, and what about the army-driven baby brother to the Osprey, the Bell V-280 Valor, that is supposed to address many of the design concerns of the V-22 in a smaller, less expensive package? And what would you like to see from us in future aviation videos? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, we would be honored to have your subscription. We're 2-Bit Aviation. Thank you for watching.